People discover new things all the time, but it's not every day something is found that truly shakes our understanding of the world and reality itself. But these things did. These are the 20 most amazing discoveries that shock the world. Number 20. Eternal Data Storage Disk some very clever scientists have been working on ways to store digital data for the next billion years or so. Up until now, most of the methods that we've used to save and keep data have been flawed, prone to deterioration, and frankly, not built to withstand the test of time. And that's been a bit of a problem, especially when we're looking to further reaches of the future. A group of scientists at Southampton University have been fiddling about with such things and have made a bit of a breakthrough. By using something called nanostructured glass, they've been developing something that's able to record and retrieve five-dimensional data. Apparently, this material and data storage is able to hold up to 360 terabytes of data, and it can survive up to 1,000 degrees Celsius, or around 13.8 billion years at room temperature. It's believed to be the future for libraries and archives to store their most important documents, information, and records. Whether or not all of this future stuff and humankind or whatever there may be in a billion years will be the slightest bit of interest to our Florida holiday snaps and archaic technologies, who can say, really? We wouldn't be human if we didn't insist on trying to develop future-proof stuff, and that's how we all continue to move forward, after all. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Want to know why this video is called A Flat Tired Leads Them to a Discovery That Can Change History? It's because a few archaeologists got stuck in the mud when traveling to an excavation site in India and ended up discovering something even more incredible as a result. They started to use their digging tool to free their vehicle, and in doing so found this peculiar thing. Many people are saying it looks like an alien tomb and body, and skeptics may say that it's not that, but if so, what is it? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag Sweet Topic. Number 19. Earth has a second moon. Well, it sort of does. It's a bit like a moon, but could easily be considered false advertising to call this thing a proper moon. But let's poke around in it a little bit more, shall we? This is a so-called quasi-moon, and what that means is that it's a moving celestial object, but not really a whole lot to write home about, to be honest. It measures less than 164 feet across and circles the Earth in a repeated orbit that brings it about as close to Earth as 239,000 miles at any given time. This moon would be discovered in 2000. 2016, but it's estimated to only have been hanging around in our orbit for about 300 or so years because it has an unstable trajectory, mostly because the opposing gravitational forces of the Earth and Sun and pushing it around, and frankly, it's a bit feeble. Anyways, this other moon, which has been given a Hawaiian-sounding name that means celestial body, is actually a piece of our moon anyways. The scientists did a lot of clever stuff by testing the infrared frequency of the quasi-moon against a bunch of other space debris like asteroids asteroids, and what have you, but nothing quite matched the profile. That is, until they tested it against the bits of moon that were brought back after the Apollo 14 mission in 1971. That's when it became a straight-up map. The paternity test was positive, and everyone is going to have to go on Jerry Springer to have a great row about it. Number 18. The Latoli Footprints Dating all the way back to 3.7 million years ago, these footprints are pretty odd, but that's not the only reason that they're important. Discovered in Tanzania in 1978, these footprints are the evidence that proves that people have been walking upright on two feet since at least that point in time. It's the oldest known example of bipedal footprints and has been interpreted to show that these footprints were made by an early human. There were another set of prints at a nearby site that had been previously uncovered in 1976, however, those were later to be found to belong to a bear. That's the tricky thing with this archaeology business. Sometimes a bear wanders in and confuses things. I mean, this can happen in real life as well. So they did a lot of comparison stuff between humans and bears and how they walk and all that stuff. I mean, I thought we had kind of different footprints as well, but what do I know? I only work here and talk a lot. Number 17. Cave fish can walk up cave walls. 
In fairness, cavefish are pretty weird creatures already, so if you add this new discovery to the list of strange cavefish facts, it's almost not that surprising at all. Cavefish is the generic term that's used to describe any and all fish that live in caves, obviously. These are a special sort of species that are specifically adapted to life underground as well as underwater. They've often evolved to be very pale, some have little to no pigmentation at all, and many species are also almost completely without sight. Some have even done away with having eyes at all anymore. And so, back in 2016, some nerds from the New Jersey Institute of Technology went out to study these cavefish in Thailand. And what they discovered was pretty creepy, to be honest. There was a species of cavefish that had adapted to have a bunch of features that had previously only been in tetrapods, these being a pelvic girdle that allows the fish to walk like a salamander. Weird! But they also discovered that these cavefish use that skill to walk up the walls of the cave. Though, why they're doing that is still a bit of a mystery. However, scientists to say that this discovery may begin to shed some light on the early evolution of creatures that first crawled out of the sea and grew limbs for walking and what happened during the Devonian period. Number 16. The Nazca Lines Finally, something that could be aliens. No, sorry, actually it was the ancient South Americans. Although the jury's still out on it because it's super strange and seems really difficult to have achieved all the way back 2,000 years ago, you know. The Nazca Lines are a collection of absolutely enormous geoglyphs, meaning drawings on the Earth, which are found all along the coastal plains of Peru and South America. These lines do vary in style. Some are straight, some are geometric, and others are pictorial. The thing is, though, that they are colossal. The largest just measuring up to 30 miles long, and many of the most famous ones depict animals and plants. But these extraordinary etchings in the earth were actually created by a process of excavation. As the ancient Nazca people removed the top layers of the desert floor, it would reveal lighter colored sand beneath the rocks, and that's how the images or lines were made. It's a similar sort of process to some of the chalk hill figures that can be found in Britain. These were made by cutting away the top layers of the earth and then backfilling the trenches with chalk to create the outlines of various images on hillsides. The Nazca lines do still baffle scientists and historians alike, since nobody can exactly put their finger on why they were created and what the images might even mean. However, they are really awesome, just as artwork in their own right, and now we have drones and we can get a really good look at them. Thank heavens for drone technology, because where would we all be without it? Number 15. The Fluorescent Frog Discovered in Argentina Imagine being the world's very first at something. That would be startling, to say the least, especially if you happen to be a little frog just minding your own business when it happened. This is apparently the world's first fluorescent frog, if you can credit it. I mean, it is the first one that got treated to all kinds of testing that showed it to be fluorescent, but who knows? Maybe there's a whole subculture of fluorescent frogs that managed to avoid being prodded by scientists up until this point. All I'm saying is that just because nobody noticed something, it doesn't really mean that it didn't exist, you know? Anyways, the facts of this particular dopey story are that some scientists in Buenos Aires in Argentina discovered a frog in Santa Fe and accidentally found out that it was fluorescent under ultraviolet light. In regular light, it's yellowish brown with red spots, but under the UV light, it glows a magnificent fluorescent green. This was the first time that anyone had ever seen a fluorescence in frogs like this, and it's been observed frequently in fish, so it's not actually all that brand new and exciting in the scheme of things. But Ta-da! Frogs are cool, and you already knew that, I'm sure. Number 14. Metallic Hydrogen if you're a chemist, then this sort of thing is likely going to get you all hot and bothered under the collar. If, however, you are, like me, a science numpty, then this is probably not going to give you all the feel. But hey, hang in there. There are bound to be aliens or some other shiz coming up soon, I'm sure. My pet guinea pig Twinkle is just shaking with excitement and anticipation. Hydrogen comes in many forms, apparently. And back in 1935, a pair of solid-state physicists came up with the idea that if hydrogen were to be placed under enormous pressure, about 25 million times that of usual pressure of the Earth's atmosphere, then it would break the molecular lattice apart and electrons would begin to flow freely, thus creating metallic hydrogen. So far, so 
boring. Anyways, this set all of the scientists off in a seemingly never-ending quest to make metallic hydrogen. And they all tried, they really did. But it was really difficult, and nobody seemed to be able to quite manage it. That was until 2017. Then another pair of scientists named Silvera and Diaz had a go at it, and they think that they did it, but not everyone agrees that that was the case. And therein lies the rub. It might be possible to make metallic hydrogen, but it is really difficult to detect it, so nobody can actually agree whether or not anyone's actually discovered it or not. And so, this discovery has not been officially recognized. Oh, science, come on now, get it together. Number 13. A pill to cure alcoholism. This would occur all the way back in 2008, so I'm just gonna hazard a guess and say that it's not quite yet a done deal. Anyways, this is the story of how a French cardiologist said that he had cured alcoholism by inventing a pill that was usually used to treat muscle spasms. He claimed that he had been treating his own for decades-long struggle with alcohol addiction and had been cured by it, so he wrote a book all about it, then went on to big old self-promotion tour, and that's when he made the claim that this was a miracle pill for all over the world alcoholics. The media quite naturally did lap it up and couldn't get enough of this claim of a miracle that was under everyone's noses the entire time, but unfortunately clinical trials of the drug that he was using to treat addiction had inconclusive results. But there apparently is some evidence that it might do something or another. How great for him. Number 12. Baghdad Battery Archaeologists got really excited about a clay jar from the Parthian Empire. This was an ancient culture that ruled a large part of the Middle East between the years of 247 BC and 228 AD. Now I know, I know, archaeologist people get all excited about even the weirdest of things, but apparently this particular clay jar was unlike any other. They believe that this, and a few similar found in the same region, were examples of the very first batteries. They would be described in 1938 by German archaeologists who dug them up as being put together like so. The earthen jar was sealed with with an asphalt plug that was held in place by a sheet of copper that was rolled into a tube. The tube, in turn, was capped with a copper disc and attached with more asphalt. Then, an iron rod was poked through the plug and hung into the center of the copper tube. The jar would then have been filled with an acidic liquid like fermented grape juice and, presto, a battery of sorts. According to people who know about such things, they believe the only purpose for this object was a rudimentary battery. It would not have been very powerful, but the so-called Baghdad battery was likely to have generated between one and a half to two volt. Number 11. The Dead Sea Scrolls. In March of 2021, there was apparently a new set of bits and pieces of the Dead Sea Scrolls that would be discovered. These fragments were uncovered in a desert in Israel, and it's believed that they were hidden there at some point during a Jewish revolt against Rome almost 2,000 years ago. It was announced by the Israeli Antiquities Authority that the archaeological project, which had been ongoing for the previous four years, had unearthed bits of the Book of Twelve Minor Prophets. These apparently include the books of Zechariah and Nahum, and they're also super excited about it, but when they say fragments, well, they do really mean fragments. These are literally scraps of stuff, so who the heck can possibly say just what it all means? However, it has been 60 years since they found any other Bible bits, so there's certainly an amount of desire to find almost anything. Number 10. The Giant Hole now, sometimes the winter ice that covers the surface of the Weddell Sea in Antarctica forms an enormous hole. Back in 2016 and 17, one such big hole appeared and got all the scientists especially excited. I get excited at big holes as well, so I can sympathize. It seems as though these holes do occasionally appear in the mass of big ice that covers most of Antarctica. Even bigger ones had apparently appeared there several decades before. But with all that snazzy new technology that are available these days, scientists had the opportunity to re really examine and monitor the movements like never before. They would use satellite imagery, robotic drifters, and even some of those seals that they've fitted with sensory equipment to keep watch over the shifting ice. They concluded that these holes could appear as the result of several different phenomena, and these were things like unusual conditions in the ocean and some very intensive storms that had formed all over the area, which had displayed almost hurricane levels of wind. Well, whoever knew that ice holes were so very exciting. Number 9. Massive Mysterious Rock in Bosnia 
time. Ah, uh, yeah, there's nothing like a massive spherical object to send people into a frenzy of bafflement and confusion. It's probably aliens, though, right? I mean, it usually is. In 2016, an enormous round stone would be discovered in the forest in Bosnia and had all of the sciencey people who enjoy such things scratching their noggins in puzzlement. The boulder was discovered half buried in the ground, and it has yet to be determined exactly what it's composed of, but it does look likely to be at least partly made from iron. It's about one and a half meters in diameter and probably weighs about 30 tons. The thing about it is, that's causing all the consternation, is that it seems to be a massive, perfectly spherical object which has no immediate explanation. Some have said that it's proof that these countries in Southern Europe, you know, the Balkans in particular, had some advanced civilizations living there in the distant past. But for some reason, there were no written records of any of them anywhere at all. It seems like finding one ball in the woods is not exactly quite the same thing as discovering endless amounts of evidence of human civilizations, you know, like in ancient Egypt or something. But then again, what do I know? I talk too much. Number 8. The Growl Bell Man Archaeologists just love a good bog. Those are the places that are hiding all kinds of excellent secrets. Sometimes they're even doing a brilliant job of preserving dead people. Ah, such fun. The Growbell Man is one such lucky dead human. This poor ancient chap seems to have expired all the way back in the Iron Age, which was likely about 2,200 years ago. His body would be discovered well preserved in a peat bog in an area of central Jutland in Denmark back in 1952. The extremely acidic bogs in that area have a very very low oxygen level, meaning that all the stuff inside of them is able to remain in remarkably preserved states for literally thousands of years. This guy has ginger hair, which is incredibly well preserved, although it was the bog's acidity that turned it that color. He probably wasn't all shiny and metallic looking in real life. That's just a result of the bog's pH level on the body as it's mummified. It also seems as though the bog person died violently. His body shows evidence that his throat had been cut, and some have put forward the theory that this was part of a ritual sacrifice. That just goes to add a whole different dimension to the mystery, and certainly makes the guessing parts of this story a bit more gruesome. If you want to go and look at the Growbell Man, well, you'll be thrilled to hear that you actually can. He's on display in a museum near Arhus. What a fun one. Number 7. The Sunken Skull's Tomb Next up, we're in Sweden, where it seems as though Scandinavia was extra busy preserving all kinds of bits and things from bodies a thousand years ago. It's kind of creepy, but they're known to do things a bit differently there. What we have here is a collection of skulls. Nothing so jolly as a collection of skulls now is there. There was apparently unearthed in 2009 an archaeological excavation of dry prehistoric lake beds in the area of Motala in Sweden. It was a weird discovery to say the least. This collection of skulls wasn't just an assortment of bones in the usual sense of these things. These skulls had been mounted on stakes. So yeah, argue archaeologists set about reconstructing what one of these heads may have looked like when it was attached to a body all the way back 8,000 years ago. Because for some reason, this is a thing that people are obsessed with doing these days. They reconstructed him, but what about all this steak business? Well, according to some historians, this was likely a practice of colonial people who had murdered the natives to mount their skulls onto the stakes. They believe that this site might have been used for rituals and secondary burials, as in after the dead bodies had decomposed, their bones were then moved there. The skulls would have been placed on stakes as a way to display them, and whatever it was, it seems that there was likely plenty of violence and rituals involved, and it's all rather unpleasant. Number 6. Antikythera Mechanism a trading ship sank off the coast of the island of Antikythera in the Mediterranean Sea during the first half of the first century BC. This wreck has proven to be a site of such enormous archaeological significance as it's revealed its secrets over the years. One such revelation was that of a mechanism that belies all previous understanding of how advanced the use of geared mechanisms actually was during the time. Until the discovery of the Antikythera mechanism, there had been no such discovery of any engineering that involved gears. In fact, it was 
was not believed to have been in use until medieval cathedral clocks were built over a thousand years later. The mechanical device is believed to have been used for calculating and displaying information about astronomical phenomenon because back in ancient Greece, this was obviously cutting edge technology and is actually surprisingly sophisticated. It's been scanned and the resulting radiographic imagery shows that there are 30 gear wheels that form a part of the internal mechanism of the machine. So this may be difficult to explain in some respects, but only because historians had not yet discovered the true extent of the knowledge and skills of the ancient people. It may add as much mystery to the matter as it explains, however. Number 5. The Library of Ashurbanipal Ashurbanipal was the last great king of Assyria, ruling between the years of 668 and 630 BC, and his is the oldest surviving royal library in the world. Well, sort of surviving, in that it was discovered by Austin Henry Laird in 1850, and then all of it would be taken to Britain and put into a British museum. For this, it is possible to read looted or stolen or recovered, depending on your own personal sensibilities and ideas about certain countries, removing items of enormous cultural and historical significance from another country and then putting them in a museum somewhere completely different without any sort of official agreement or loan or whatever. But anyways, here it is, some 30,000 clay tablets which contain around about 1,200 different texts. These tablets had separate rooms, depending on their subjects, and there were rooms that were devoted to history, religion, magic, and government. You know, just like a real library. Number 4. The Gobleki Tepe this location in Turkey shows evidence of a long-lost civilization of people who inhabited this place over 11,000 years ago. The site itself has a large collection of stone pillar monoliths, and it's actually the largest collection of such objects in the world, according to some history people anyway. They reckon that the site itself might even have evidence that there had been a huge incident about 13,000 years ago. They speculate whether it was a comet or some such event that wiped out the population of this civilization. The remaining people then went went on to build this particular place. How they concluded this, or indeed what evidence they were drawing on, is not made clear. So if I were you, I would probably put this into a folder marked dubious and then move swiftly on. Number 3. The Olmec Colossal Heads Although we know about the Aztecs and the Mayans and the history of Mexico, it turns out that there was another group that came before them. They were called the Olmecs, and it seems as though they like to make stuff like really, really big stuff. These are the colossal heads of the Olmecs. Although very little is actually known about these people, they did leave behind some creative stuff that can offer at least a few clues as to their interests and abilities, if nothing else. These heads would be carved during the Olmec era, which is said to be between 1200 and 400 BC. The Olmecs lived around the Gulf of Mexico in the areas that are now known as Veracruz and Tabasco. The little evidence that does exist seems to indicate that the Olmecs were pretty sophisticated. They were after all, rather good at sculpture if these heads are anything to go by. The heads themselves are officially discovered in 1938, and they were carved from round boulders of basalt. 17 of them are known to exist. There are traces of paint to be found on the sculptures, which would suggest that they may have once been colorfully painted. But why they were made, indeed how they were made, or transported, is still an absolute mystery to researchers. Perhaps you have some ideas. You probably do. So go ahead and sling them in the comments section down below. Me and my pet guinea pig Twinkle would love to read them. Number 2. Mysterious Lake in the Tunisian Desert Next up, we go to Tunisia, visiting a mysterious lake. Ooh, spooky. Well, it actually kind of is. The lake wasn't there one minute, and then suddenly it was. Like a mirage appearing in the desert landscape. It began as a beautiful turquoise oasis, and then began turning into a kind of green sludge. The trouble being that a mysterious lake could contain all kinds of nasty stuff, but apparently people weren't exactly concerned about that, and set about swimming and splashing all about in it anyways. The explanations for the sudden appearance of a lake are that it was likely a rupture in the rock above the level of the water table. The area had been used for mining and other more disruptive stuff that can cause this kind of sudden shift in the landscape, but the fact that it soon changed color would indicate that there was no fresh water entering the lake after its initial appearance. Ew, gross. Number 1. Mummified Penguins 
Penguins had disappeared from the area of Cape Arazer in Antarctica for more than a century, but then in 2016, scientists actually found an abandoned penguin colony. This site was kind of gruesome, as it contained fresh bodies and poop, but also the mummified remains of penguins along with bones. It had everyone confused for a while until some bright spark put forward a suggestion that seems kind of obvious. Penguin remains had previously been buried under ice, probably for hundreds of years, but the snow had recently melted and that had revealed the bodies of the old penguin colony. It's not exactly rocket science, people. That's all the time we have for amazing discoveries today, but I'm sure we'll be back with more before long. Which of these cool discoveries absolutely blew your mind? Let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.